Hey friends, I wanted to communicate something to you that makes a, an enormous difference. All the difference in the world is so valuable. I keep myself really busy with my work, but the work that I keep myself busy with is all entirely at my own leisure. It's not like I have to keep myself busy or do any work at all because I'm at the end of some puppet strings of somebody else, like, I don't know, an employer or some lenders if I were in debt and things like that. My income is it's passive, which means that I get paid whether I work or if I don't work. And that translates into freedom, translates into security, it translates into insurance for any kind of I could ever possibly want, and it also translates to funding my dream circle instead of shrinking my dreams, which is what a lot of people do. And when you shrink your dreams, you kill your human spirit. All those dreams you had when you were a child, if you started diminishing those, then you've already started killing off your human your your human spirit, and that is incredibly dangerous to do. So what I love about what I do is that it's a passive income. I love the work itself, granted, but it's a passive income. So I get paid whether I work or if I don't work. So all the busyness that I'm caught up in is at my own leisure. And if I had, say, a job or if I were working for money, it wouldn't be at my leisure. It would be at somebody else's demand because if I didn't, then I wouldn't get paid anymore. And if I stopped working, I wouldn't get paid anymore. And I'd be enslaved to money. So it's a big difference in why you're working. Is it because if you don't, you're not going to get paid anymore? Or is it is your work totally at your own leisure? Or maybe there's an interest or a hobby or something you're really passionate about doing and it doesn't pay very well or it doesn't pay anything at all. But maybe you can't really do it as full as you'd like to because you still got to pay the bills and you got this other job thing going on where if you stop working you don't get paid and then you can't do anything. And that's how a lot of people live and there is no need to live that way. I know that a lot of you just need to know that there's that there's another way to do it. For some of you, you just don't know. So now you know, at least you have an idea anyway. And you can always talk to me about what the heck I'm talking about so you know and how you can apply it to your own life. But I'm telling you, a passive income that totally covers your expenses, your cost of living, and when you grow it up even bigger from that, then that's your freedom, it's your security, it's all your insurances, it's, it's everything that you would ever possibly ever want it to be. And then all the work that you do at that point is at your own leisure instead of at the end of some puppet strings of somebody else that has you underneath their thumb that can tell you what to do. So when you got that passive income big enough, then you're no longer living underneath the thumb of anybody that can tell you to do anything and you're also no longer working for money. It sucks to work for money. It's not fun. It's, uh, it's slavery. It's absolute money slavery. And being free means that you're no longer a slave to money because you could stop working and you're still going to get paid anyway, at least enough to cover your expenses. That's the difference, and it makes all the difference in the world for me. And uh, everyone else, too, that lives on this side of the fence. So that's pretty cool. And it's generally something that people do, especially me. In the beginning, in their spare time outside of everything else they've got going on, everything else that I had going on, I was going to college full time and a half and I had some other responsibilities I had to take care of as well. So I didn't have a lot of time. I just had to be faithful with the little bit of time that I did have. And a couple of years into it, I built up this uh, asset that gives me a passive income that enabled me to just not ever have to have a job again. So I haven't had a job since 2006. That was quite a few years ago. And I don't think I'll ever get a job ever again. I mean, why should I? There's just no need for that. And if I did want a job, then at least I could have the freedom to have that job at my leisure rather than at somebody else's demand because I may not be able to afford the cost of living without that job. So if I did want to get a job, it would be at my leisure. If I want to work uh, my business or whatever, take on an interesting project, it would be at my leisure. It doesn't matter because I no longer work for money. So it doesn't matter if you have a job and you're happy. If you don't have a passive income, that's affording your cost of living and all of your expenses, then regardless of if you love your job or not, you are totally enslaved to money. You've anointed money as your all-time master. And that's the lifestyle that you live if you don't have that passive income of, a, of a, your own personal resources covering all your expenses. And it's really important that you all understand that because I know that that is probably the root 
of the severe disconnect that a lot of people have, most people, including most of not all my friends, about um, you know that disconnect between what it means to be free and maybe you know there's there's always this, but I love my job, so I'm free. No, you're not. You're not free at all. Just because you love your job, it doesn't mean you're free. If you stop working, you don't get paid. You're not free. You've anointed money as your personal master. I only know one person of all the many, many people I know who actually loves his job and he's free. And the only reason he's free is because he has that passive income from his own personal resources that can afford him and his whole family every expense that they make every month, every year. And then he has this job which he is free to do at his leisure because he's free. And that's, uh, and that's, the, that's the disconnect that uh, so many of you out there have. In fact, I would, I would bet 99 out of 100 of you watching this have that disconnect. And I really hope, you know, my goal with this video, I guess, is that I connect you to reality and you start thinking about things differently, thinking about things a lot differently so that you can be more prepared for, you know, the real world. Because a lot of you, I'm telling you, one of these days, your job isn't going to be there anymore. I don't care what industry you're in. It could be for the government. There's people that have government jobs that are like, oh, my job is always going to be safe and secure, and suddenly their hours are cut, or they don't have it anymore. And it doesn't matter what industry, and it, it's not an absolute certainty that something's going to happen to your job, but I don't care how secure you think it is or what industry you're in, something's going to happen. Because you have no control over it. Your job you don't even own, somebody else does. And because you don't own it, that means you have absolutely no control over it. And what is risk? People want jobs. Usually the number one reason is because I need the security of a, a paycheck, you know, safety and all these things. And that's, that's a disconnect from reality. Because if you don't have any control over your job, then that is the riskiest gamble you'll ever take. Because what is, what is risk? Risk means you don't have any control. And if you don't own something, if you don't own your job, which you don't own your job, then you have no control. Therefore, you're at the highest risk you could ever possibly be. You'll pay the highest in taxes for that risk. And the harder you work and the more money you make, the more you'll be penalized by the tax code. And it's not going to behoove you to argue whether that's fair or not. What will behoove you is if you focus your energy into how you respond to it and using taxes and freedom so that it suits you rather than destroys you. And that's the reality on the ground. That's the reality check, the truth serum, call it whatever you want to. But um, I think if you have, if you're humble enough, you'll hear it for what it is and you'll start to think a little bit differently. Even if it's not the same exact way that I think, it doesn't have to be. I've got my own perspective, you've got yours, but start shifting it and advancing your perspective forward so that you don't get caught with your pants down and suddenly you have no job, no income, and now you, you can't figure out how you're gonna put food on the table to feed your family. So I want you to be prepared as, so you can avoid ever having to deal with that scenario. And if you have any questions about what the heck it is that I'm talking about, and just uh, just let me know and if I can help I'll help